WISC TV now presents For the Record. Imagining Madison is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. Today we're going to talk about the Madison of our imaginations, the place we would like Madison to be, things we would change, things we would do differently. For the better part of this year, the city of Madison has conducted a unique public listening campaign asking citizens for their individual visions for our community. Call it people-powered planning, as organizers with Madison's planning division have done. There's been a lot of listening already with more to come, and there have been some very interesting ideas shared. We will update you on Imagine Madison now and talk about ways for you to participate as I welcome to For the Record City of Madison Planning Director Heather Stouter, Latino Family Resource Center Coordinator Veronica Vega, and President and CEO of the Rebalanced Life Wellness Association, Erin Perry. And Veronica, remind me again, what neighborhood is the Latino Family Center? Bridge Lake Point. Bridgeport Lake Point. Thank you very much. So welcome. Thanks for doing this. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Thanks for having us. It's flown a little bit under the radar, I think, in terms of, of, of the general public's awareness of it. Uh, Although the idea of a regular planning component to, to, the, to the city's work has been going on for a long time. But Heather, describe sort of the, the origin of, of Imagine Madison. Sure. Um, so every 10 years, the city needs to update our, our comprehensive plan, which is a really big picture guide for city investment and, and growth over time. Uh, the comprehensive plan has about a 20-year outlook, and so we're looking ahead and thinking about how we can accommodate 40,000 new households over the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Imagine Madison um, is, a, is a slightly less boring name for this process <laughs> yeah. that a local marketing consultant helped us to come up with. Um, it, it is, like you said, a public listening campaign. We want to hear as many Madison voices as possible in shaping the, the future of the city as we continue to grow and change over time. Um, so Imagine Madison uh, started with a, a pretty robust public engagement plan that was February, a, a, is that about right? It started um, actually last last December was the okay. first uh, first sort of public uh, face of it uh, gotcha. with a series of meetings in phase one last December. And since then, we've reached about 10,000 Madisonians um, mm -hmm. through various ways, and community meetings, websites, resident panels, which we'll talk about a, a little bit later here. Um, and, and so we feel like, you know, while we, while we want to hear as many voices as possible and would love to, to get that number up, we're really proud of, of the variety of efforts um, that have taken place to really hear voices and, and help shape the city as we move forward. I think 10,000 sounds like a pretty good number. Did, did the process differ significantly from... 10 years ago? Well, sure it did, and, and the world is so different than it was 10 years yeah. ago with technology and, and social media and whatnot. And so I think 10 years ago we focused largely on uh, community meetings, city-led community meetings um, that, you know, uh, few people actually attend those when you when you think of the, the numbers in the city right. as a whole. Right. Um, this year we really tried to, to hit as many different uh, ways of reaching people as possible. So a much more robust website since that's the way a lot of people interface with, with processes like this. And then really trying to deepen our engagement by, by working with community partners who are really tapped into a variety of communities across the city. Community partners. Yes. Veronica, just how did how did you get involved and what did you think when, uh, when you first heard of the idea? Well, uh, you know, we get in the emails that uh, the city is uh, doing this incredible Imagine Madison and we decided to apply and we got approved and that was a very good news for us uh, because uh, we never have reached uh, before to get this uh, partnership and uh, get a uh, people from the community to give these ideas. So it was a, an awesome idea. And um, uh, so we reach out people by our Latino um, uh, families. Is that who filed the application? Was the Latino yes. Family Resource Center yes. within the Bridge Lake Point and, neighborhood center? Yeah, and also Latino Academy also was part, a big part of this. I got gotcha. you. Yes, so it was a big group of us. Um, <laughs> presenting these and uh, it's been great. Yeah. People love it. Aaron, did you apply as well then? Yes, we did. Um, <clears throat> we wanted to give a voice to obviously uh, a group that typically haven't had a, a voice and we went to the, um, the my men's health centers in the, the barbershop, JP Hair Design. Right. And so it just made sense to, to engage the men from the barbershop in this process because you see men from human services, law enforcement, 
um, financial planners, obviously the barbershop, um, the barbers. And so we knew that we would get a, a significant voice of, of, from the black community, particularly I'd, black I'd community. be remiss in not saying that there's a, uh, there's a photo essay on the barbershop in the current <laughs> issue of Madison Magazine <laughs> that I direct people's attention to because yeah. it's just a really, it's a nice visual depiction of the environment right. in, w in which you do this work, yeah. which is pretty unique. Yeah, you, you know, with the barbershop, you know, you see a significant number of men that come through JP Hair Design. Because it's by appointment only, we don't have a lot of um, you know cancellations. So when men set those appointments, they show up, and, and that's the neat thing about it. So we knew that we would be able to capture the voice of a significant number of men. I think I could understand why you would choose these two Heather, to participate. <laughs> but were there a num Were there a lot of groups that that, that applied you know, that you had to pick and choose from? Great question. We were we were really blown away with the interest oh. in this um, this opportunity. We had about 40 applicants, um, and and these are all amazing, you know, grassroots community organizers who are really tapped into these communities. 40 applicants, and we were able to fund uh, a dozen of them. Uh, this time around. We did try to do some follow-up outreach to the ones who, who didn't end up obtaining funding and invited them to attend a, a community meeting last August um, so that we could be sure to broaden that uh, opportunity for, for um, input even more. But yes, we were, we were just thrilled with the, the response and it really tells us that the city needs to be continuing um, on this path, you know, well, continuing these types of efforts. Yeah, I mean, what does, what does this tell us? That there is a, uh, a hunger to participate in imagining the future yeah. of this city that people care about, mm -hmm. or there's a frustration with how things aren't working as well as some people might like to see them work. Exactly. I think that's a great Both. point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think that, you know, typically, um, if we hear certain voices over and over again, we, we really lose out on perhaps people in the community who, who really need the city to, to step up and be a better partner to, to help improve quality of, qualities of life in, in parts of the community that we don't hear from it as often. Yeah. So that's what part of this is all about. Well, when we come back, I'd like you to describe what you heard from, yes. from the, the groups, the, the resident panels that you led, yes. and then what you heard from those resident panels as well, and we'll yeah. do that when we come back right after this. Great. Imagine Madison will provide direction for land development, transportation, housing, and other decisions to make a healthier, more equitable, sustainable, and resilient city. We need your help to plan for Madison's future. Please visit the Imagine Madison website at imaginemadisonwi.com to see how you can be part of the process. My guests on For the Record, three people who have been working very hard on Imagine Madison over much of the last year. Heather Stouter, who is the uh, Planning uh, Division Director for the City of Madison. And Veronica Vega, who is the uh, Resource Center Coordinator at the Lat Latino Family Resource Center in Bridge Lake Point neighborhood. And Aaron Perry, who is the uh, CEO and President of Rebalanced Life Wellness Association. So you both organized ran resident panels, right, yeah, as, yeah. as part of your work uh, yes. with Imagine Madison. How did that process go? Who came? What was the discussion like? So uh, uh, everything is a process from the city of Madison gives us, uh, us the training to do this um, uh, and have the, they provide us everything what we need uh, to give uh, this presentation. And uh, in my case, I did have to do translation. Uh -huh. So it was uh, a little more work. And facilitate at the same time? Exactly. Okay, okay. But it was worth it. Um, it and then uh, everything went smoothly. Uh, like I said before, people was really engaged in what is going to be in the future of Madison. Um, they would like to see more community centers. Uh, because that's where everything creates power mm -hmm. uh, and uh, bring everybody together. What kind of what kind of diversity did you have within your group, Veronica? Of various Latinx cultures, ages, that kind of thing. Um, it was a mix of a little bit of everything, I yeah. will say, and the ages uh, will range from twenty 
to like 65. I mean, I would think yeah. that w that's important to, yeah. to, to get that. Aaron, what, what was your experience like? <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it was fun, actually, <laughs> to, to help men, uh, particularly African-American men, understand that we now have a, an opportunity to have a voice to, to shape the future or add to the shaping the future of uh, the, the city. And so we had 15 men, African-American men, came out for our first uh, listening session. And uh, I, I describe it as positive, organized skepticism. We didn't know what it was going to be, sure. yeah. but what Imagine Madison has done, it created all of this research. It spelled out exactly what the plan is, but what, uh, because I'm kind of a researcher's mind, I was really impressed mm -hmm. with the numbers, um, it, it was very well put together. What we all walked away with is that understanding that we may not be there yet, but the city is at least trying. Was it up to you, Aaron, to, to convey to, to these 15 uh, men that this was worth their while, that this was going to be taken seriously, that they were going to be heard? Right, yeah, and I think that's where the skepticism comes in. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, but, you know, we gave, uh, the hardest part actually really was getting the men to stop talking so that others could talk. <laughs> it, was, it was just a great evening that we, sh we spent together. We still continue to get together. Yeah. Um, but the men all walked away with, a, a, it's a keen understanding that, wow, um, the city is really trying, but there's also a lot that we don't know about what the city is doing. Mm -hmm. And so this process really helped bring that home. Exactly. How many yeah. sessions did you get to, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great question. By design, city staff did not oh, okay. um, attend these sessions. And, oh. and we, we talked with each of the facilitators and really made that decision that, um, you know, really we wanted this to be a safe space that didn't seem so city-led or bureaucratic. Mm -hmm. and, and so, Unfortunately, because I would have loved to uh, be a flying all sure. attend all I'm of sure. them. We we did not attend um, the resident panel sessions, but worked closely with the facilitators and, and collected feedback um, right away yes, and, exactly. and, and analyzed that feedback. Exactly, we're still working to to analyze it. We're passing it along to other department um, and division heads to make sure that you know if feedback relates to parks, for instance, that that's getting to the right right city staff people. Um, we're also making sure to separate out some of the resident panel feedback and sharing that directly with our plan commission and city council who uh -huh. are sort of the decision makers right. um, for the update of this plan just to make sure that it, that it's not all being aggregated into one um, average for the entire city on the, yeah. the way that the way that people feel about things we're, we're really um, drawing that out and making sure that decision makers know what resident panels specifically have have said. Well, before I get your sort of organizer's perspective on this, give me some specifics. What did you hear f with specific ideas, Aaron? You know, one of the things that really stood out is the number of um, the housing units that are uh -huh. going on. That was a big one, you know. Um, I mean, we're in the barbershop, so we have the extreme high income earners all the way down to the person that's really struggling. And so we, we try to have a voice for everyone, but that was one of the things that really came out is why, why is all the housing going up? And so we learned through the process of the housing shortage, you know, and so little things like that, that the men who work in law enforcement, who work in human services, you know, when we stay in our lane, we typically don't get outside our lane. So being able to step outside of our comfort zone and, and try to take in what 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 is going on in the city that was really powerful and for see us. housing as a component that influences so many mm -hmm. other aspects of life yes that absolutely. these men um, absolutely in, in, interact with and, and and again we had students from uw we had a couple of um one kid who's a a, a law school student um he brought a a, a a lovely perspective to this we've had guys in human services the financial market. Um, it was just amazing having all these voices come together when we started out being very hesitant on what, what's going to happen here. Veronica, give us yeah. a couple of ideas that you heard that maybe maybe surprised yeah. you. Well, um, one of the, is the same thing, you know, I mean, people was uh, really talking, they don't want to stop, you know, they have these great ideas. But uh, one of the uh, people is worried about how many units uh, Madison is going to create. Yeah. You know, the population is going to be extremely high, uh, and uh, prices are, are going to be higher too. You know, the more people it comes, 
the higher prices going to be, like rents and things like that. Sure. So houses, housing is going to be very expensive. So that's one of the things that uh, we, our resident panel worry about. Um, but we talk everything from transportation to green spaces. So it was um, great to hear that, uh, you know, uh, transportation doesn't reach out like uh, outside like Wanaki, Sun Prairie. People are living in all these areas, but it's hard to uh, get transportation to Madison. Mm -hmm. So it will be a good idea to have uh, more buses coming through different areas. Well, when we come back, Heather, I'd like you to kind of give us a big picture uh, uh, of what Imagine Madison you, uh, you, you've heard and how people can participate moving forward. And we're going to do that when we come back. Look at infrastructure, spending on infrastructure, and that's not very sexy or exciting. It's not a great new initiative, you know. The smaller things, like making sure that snow removal is done properly. No he podido conseguir una casa, pero yo tengo un magnífico récord en en mis contratos de renta porque no gano mucho dinero. No he podido conseguir un lugar. Imagine Madison is the title given to the, um, the every 10 years update of the Madison Comprehensive Plan, and we are talking about Imagine Madison this morning. And uh, City of Madison Planning Division Director Heather Stouter. Um, so we've been hearing from some of the resident panels mm -hmm. and uh, housing, transportation, no surprise there, I, right. I, I, I trust. Mm -hmm. But just in terms of other ideas and, and how, how viewers might get a sense of what this is going to look like moving forward. Sure. Um, you know, a couple, I think housing and transportation are indeed the, the big things that we're hearing, not just from resident panels, but from almost everyone touching this process. Um, jobs as well. Let's let's make sure that the city is is being a partner in creation of, of jobs that really match our, our population and can provide those career ladder jobs that, that start with a, you know, family supporting wage. Um, so, the, the, you know, the city, I think, is, is hearing that very clearly. Um, let's link those uh, you know, housing and jobs with a, a more robust transportation system that doesn't rely on on cars exclusively. You know, let's continue really building a more robust transit system and ensuring that um, that people with with lesser, you know, fewer choices, lesser means can have good access to to job opportunities via via transit. Um, some of the nuanced, you know, responses that we've heard um, from re resident panels, we've heard uh, a few different responses that we need cultural spaces in this city that really that really resonate with our with our culture. We've heard that from groups of Hmong, um, Hmong groups. We've heard it from um, the transgender group that we have uh, has has really said we need safe spaces that um, you know, are, are really, uh, you know, really, again, resonate with, with our community. And with, we're thinking a lot about that in Madison. I think a lot what of that... The, I mean, are those, like, uh, galleries, coffee shops... Uh, and perhaps just, Community you know, centers, what... Businesses that are owned by, by people that, uh, that represent that community uh, as well. And uh, so I, I think the city's hearing that very clearly. You know, we need to be a better partner to support um, entrepreneurship yep. of a much wider variety of, of Madison residents than, than what we see now. Um, but also coffee shops, uh, community centers, yeah. um, th those things as well are, are desired, I think, strongly by a, by a variety of, of these groups. Anyone is welcome <laughs> to, to visit the website, right? Absolutely. And, 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 there's, and, a, and there's a survey on there? That there is. Um, what we've done with our website this time around is we're working with a web consultant who can create basically a, a way to participate in a community meeting yeah. online. And so people visiting the website can participate in the same activities that resident panelists are, are participating in that we've had at our, our you know, larger community meetings. Um, there's a way to, you know, please do visit the website and add your input. Help us to prioritize strategies moving forward. Um, share your thoughts on where growth should go. Again, we're adding 40,000 new households over the next 20 years. Where should that growth go, and how can it? How can we really help to leverage that growth to improve quality of life for city city residents? And then, what's the process moving forward? 
Sure. We will have the, the website open for the feedback that I just described until about December 15th, okay. so mid-December. have a few more weeks left to, to really get that going. And then staff's going to work <coughs> to begin to draft the, the update to the plan. So drafting the document, we'll continue to meet with um, resident panel groups over the, over the early you know, first quarter of next year, January through March. Um, we do anticipate introducing a, a draft version of the plan in March of next year and it will move its way through probably a dozen different boards, committees, and commissions in the city, all at public meetings. Um, anyone's welcome to attend those meetings, um, share their perspective, and then ultimately what we hope is that the plan is adopted in June or July of, of next year. And will be published on the, web, on the website and people Absolutely. will be able to see a 10-year plan that came yep. out of this process. Exactly. That's, that's prioritized and, and really spells out, you know, what are the actions that the city will take and what can the city be held accountable to over yeah. time. You have one more resident panel coming up. Yes, we're excited about it too. Getting all the men to come together at the same schedule. We have a lot of law enforcement guys. <clears throat> we have, uh, again, uh, we just have some really interesting men that have come together and, and they're Same excited. 15, Aaron? It'll be a different, it, it'll oh, okay. be a, a mix, um, some okay. guys that have been there before, but we also have some, some new voices. And that's what came out of the first one. We posted a photo on Facebook, and there was a number of men said, hey, when's the next one? Yeah. And so we were able to bring them on board for the second, and now doing the third, we're looking forward to just really bringing home, the, the, for one, the transparency of the city, that they've given us that, that opportunity to see, but really, again, given the voice to this process. Um, at the end of the day, we all agree, um, all of the men that participated, that the city is trying. Yeah. We, we, we all agreed on that. Yeah. And that you and, 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 and the participants would feel some ownership of this yes, plan. Yes, absolutely. I mean, are absolutely. you optimistic about that? You know, I think that, again, the transparency of this whole process is what was really intriguing but the amount of information that they opened up to, to us normal folks in the community, um, we were really impressed with it. Again, the best thing that I can say is um, the city is really trying, and we're plan, glad to be a part of it. You plan to stay involved, Veronica, yes, moving forward? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to stay in and um, for this to work. Yeah. Well, I thought this was, uh, this was fascinating and, and in, uh, encouraging us to use our imaginations thinking about Madison is always a very stimulating thought. So thank yeah. you very much for, for joining me. And we're going to come thank back you. and wrap up for the record right after this. Thank you. My thanks to Heather and Veronica and Aaron and to you for joining us. And we'll see you next week on For the Record. Okay.